I sometimes get this question, how far can a camera see? And the answer is, well, it depends. Uh, if this comes up as a surprise or uh, you might have asked yourself the same question, stick around because in the next few minutes, I'll actually explain some of the nuances of CCTV surveillance when the subject being surveyed is at a distance, when it comes not only to human operators, but also artificial intelligence and video analytics. So back to the original question, how far can a camera see? Well, how far can your eyes see? So imagine you're on top of a hill and you're overlooking a city. You see the whole skyline, or you might be in a building now that's quite high up and you can just look on the window. Pretty sure you can see very far away, but can you actually distinguish the people? Let's say a few blocks down, can you see their faces? Can you understand this is a person that you know? And obviously as further you go, you can still distinguish things, but it's harder to understand, for example, what do certain people do on a street that's very far away. Similarly, cameras can pretty much see very far away, but what can you as an operator actually do with that image? And in order for us to discuss this, we have to understand how to quantify the quality something is recorded at a particular distance. And this is where the metric of pixels per foot comes in. Without going into um, too much detail, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about pixels. An image is composed of millions of them, that's the megapixel term, and they're spread around in lines across the image. If you were to take a ruler, so this is about less than half a foot, let's say we have two of these pens, and you were to measure the number of pixels that's actually arranged, you can then get this metric of pixels per foot. So as the subject moves away from the camera, you'll actually get less pixels covering it. Thus, we can deduce that pixels per foot is a metric that is inversely proportional with the distance. The closer you are to the camera, the more pixels per foot cover you, while the further you are, the less pixels per foot you should expect. So why is this important? Well, now we can actually take this and match it with our data sheets and start to actually understand what quality to expect from different cameras. And if you think about this, the more pixels per foot an object or a subject has, the more likely you can identify them, know what they're doing, etc. When you're deploying your surveillance cameras, you need to make sure that those areas such as entranceways, hallways, objects of interest you want to keep secure, are as close as possible so you know exactly, for example, somebody is tampering with them. Knowing this, how do we increase pixels per foot? Well, there are two ways you can do this. One, either go with a higher resolution camera, once you go from five megapixels to 4K, which is essentially eight megapixels, you have three million more pixels for the same area, thus more pixel density, or you move closer to the subject. And how you can do that, is either statically by having a very focal camera and zooming it in. Remember that gives you clarity at distance, but you will lose the sight. Or use the pan tilt zoom camera that is able to zoom really, really far away and help you in real time track a particular subject. So now that we know that pixels per foot is the way that we quantify the clarity and the detail at distance, and we have two methods of increasing this by again, either zooming in passively or actively or going for a higher resolution camera now let's think about how this is perceived by a human operator versus a machine doing video analytics for a human operator things are always subjective and sometimes in some scenarios some people really would like the image can work with it while others cannot and it is very very hard to define a metric however in the industry we use the 50 pixels per foot as a general rule of thumb, because that's the distance where you can still distinguish faces and realize who that particular person is. Again, we're not saying that the camera cannot see if you're further than 50 pixels per foot away. We're just saying that it is much, much more difficult to understand who that person is. When it comes to the actual advanced analytics, things are actually much simpler. You should still want to make sure 
that the subject is as close as possible to the camera in order to allow the AI the best shot at doing its job. However, there are clear boundaries when the subject moves so far from the camera that the advanced analysis will not take place. And as you'll see in the data sheet, you have two buckets here, the person detection. So this is where you draw a bounding box, do motion search, look maybe in the uh, attributes of a person and the facial recognition, which is composed of things such as face search and person of interest. As you can imagine, because the face represents such a small part of the overall body, you'll actually need people to be closer to the camera in order to analyze them properly. And in order to use this information, you'll go in the data sheet, select the camera you're interested in, and you will have an understanding of the limits when the advanced analytics do not kick in. So CD52E, for example, if you're over 82 meters away from it, thus reach the 15 pixels per foot, one shouldn't expect people to be picked up by the camera. At the same time, even if you're 80 meters away and the camera knows you're a person, you'll still not be close enough for it to be able to do face search, meaning that you'll need to be around 15 to 16 meters away for that to happen at 75 pixels per foot. Traditionally, with generation one cameras, so that's the CD1 and CD1 series, those limits were much, much tighter, so you had to be very close to the camera. As we move towards having new umbrella chipsets and new motion algorithms, now these limits have increased, making the cameras much more performant and allowing you to position far less cameras in a certain scenario in order to make sure that the area is covered. So you'll actually see that the original Gen 1 cameras needed 75 pixels per foot for person detection and 150 for facial recognition, while the new ones only need 15 and 75, which as you can imagine, is a great accomplishment from a technical perspective. Last but not least, if you remember, I did say that if you want to do advanced analytics and you want to make sure that people and vehicles are picked up as far away as possible, one of the ways to do this is to use a 4K model. And look at this, if you look inside the CD62 or the CB62, so the six, denotes a 4K camera, you'll actually see that the pixels per foot drop to 13 and respectively 54. So compared to a CD52 where you need to be around 16 meters in order for your face to be picked up, you now can go up to 29 meters with a CD62. So we're almost looking at doubling the distance for face search to work.